Hello, everybody. This is Bart Bettiga, the publisher of Tile Letter Magazine, executive director of the National Tile Contractors Association, and welcome to this month's edition of Tile Letter One to One. I've got with me a special guest. I'm excited to have him today. He is uh, Joe Lundgren from Joe Lundgren Consulting. Joe, how are you today? I'm doing great, Bart. Yeah, Joe, give me uh, uh, you've been a, a supporter of the association and have been involved in the tile industry for a long time. But for our subscribers and our readers, tell us how you got into consulting. Give us me a little bit of a background on your tile career. Ah, uh, okay. Um, you know, it goes back now when I, I I had to count up the years when somebody had asked me the other day, and it, it's over forty years now um, that I've been in the industry and it started out as uh, a helper for uh, a guy in my neighborhood who was a policeman and he, every other day he did tile or whatever. And I was his mud mixer. And, uh, one day when I didn't have any, he didn't have any work. He said, get on your bike and ride to American only. And they're looking for a warehouse guy got hired on the spot. And it's all history from there. I started with American only in May of 1984. I'd been a helper probably three years before that, you know? So, um, after American Olean um, had been purchased by Dow Tile, I had um, worked for them um, at a couple of different locations. I ended up moving into a management position, then into a sales rep position, then into an area manager, then moved to corporate, um, where I eventually moved into the product group and of the Dow Tile American Olean um, brands, and then uh, eventually um, became vice president of marketing. Last three years, I was with uh, Dow Tile, which was 27 years of the 40. Um, I was with Dow Tile and, and I uh, learned a lot of stuff, obviously the biggest um, and, and the best out there to learn from. Um, but then after leaving there, um, because uh, I have two boys with autism and it was a challenge for my family with all the traveling I was doing. So uh, it worked out better to become a consultant that I thought I'd do for a while. And that's uh, 11 years ago is my while. I've been at it 11 years and uh, it's been really great. And I help my wife with her business part-time, but uh, a lot of my time is spent working with different companies um, within the industry, importers that want to come in, domestic factories, distributors. Um, it's been, a, it's been a, a complete mix of different types of customers. So in that role, you have to understand uh, both distribution and importing as well as manufacturing. You have, you're working with both of those type of clients? Oh, certainly. Yeah. And, you know, um, I'd say um, one uh, uh, who you've interviewed, you know, is Portobello um, for your one to one. And and they that that's one that I worked with um, probably on that project for the last five years. We, we've we worked on that and um, to see it come to fruition is great. But the original stuff started literally five years ago when we started looking at that. Um, and there's a lot of companies that come and look at the U.S. because obviously 70 percent of our tile is imported, 30 percent is domestic everybody's first thought is, hey, I'm going to go to the U.S., open up a factory. It'll fill up right away. It's very expensive to build a factory in the U.S. in comparison to other parts of the world. And so a lot of manufacturers look at it and go, I don't I don't know if that's for me. Yeah. Um, I can take that cash and invest it domestically in the country I'm in and get a return. So yeah, if it was that simple, more people would do it, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so as part of your consulting, uh, one of the things you provide – uh, that we see on a regular basis is kind of a snapshot of the economy as you see it, especially as it pertains or relates to the construction industry and filters into the tile industry. Give me, you know, your quick recap on what 2022 looked like um, economically as far as the tile industry was concerned. And then let's talk about 2023. But let's let's recap 22 as we're getting ready to close, knowing that, you know, we're publishing this in February, but we're we're, we're all doing year end forecasts right now. So what are your yeah. thoughts on the tile industry as we get ready to close 2022? Great question, you know, and and um it's been difficult, obviously, because with the tile industry and the report you reference, which anybody can sign up for my resources on my website, Joseph Lundgren Consulting. But I, I try and look at three main core indicators, and it's housing, obviously, new housing, um, the LIRA, which is the leading indicator of remodeling activity, and also the ABI, which is Architectural Billings Index for the commercial uh, realm. And when I look at those three, um, they're great indicators that historically have gotten us a good feel for what's going to happen specific to ceramic tile. And when I look at those, I, I still lean on those. But at the same time, 
we have a lot of our indicators that have been falsely propped up. Yep. is what I like to say. Um, and so we still have to stay on guard because I think uh, a lot of people are looking at the market and trying to look at the uh, historical indicators and it's not happening like it usually does from those indicators. So when I look at 2022, we're going to come in basically flat in terms of volume, you know, in, in terms of what we see overall. However, the way we measure consumption in the U.S. is that TCNA has the report from the domestic factories that they'll put out um, that you're familiar with. And then we look at the import data. And one of the things with uh, the import data um, is we don't know everyone's inventory that they have on right. hand. And so we, we, we know that a lot of factories are concerned or do, um, and, and domestic importers are, are concerned with the availability of products specifically out of the EU with what we've seen in natural gas and the, the situation in the Ukraine. So we believe that a lot of inventory was brought in. And so when I say we're flat, um, that's the way the numbers are going to come out is what I believe is that we'll be flat from a consumption. It's the dollars that changed. Um, and, and we grew, you know, we'll probably grow anywhere from 15 to 20 percent in terms of dollar volume in the United States because of the cost impact of all the things with uh, the supply chain that we've seen. And has that supply uh, situation eased? Can you update us on where that supply uh, situation is, as you see heading into you know, December and we're heading to, to uh, surfaces, Tice and, and covering. So these are buying shows, you know, what, what what's the impact going to be in importing, you know, through the through the ports right now? Well, and that, that's a good point on the, the ports. I think in the United States, you know, the ports have really been, uh, we've caught up on that that, sure. that factor. You know, you look at LA and Long Beach, which is 40% of everything that comes in, even though we're very heavily East Coast mandated. All our ports are pretty caught up. The cost from shipping is still the wild card, where we know that it's not necessarily the distance that's that's driving that. It's the supply of containers and what I like to call the oligopoly of the eight companies out there that really control the ocean rates. And we've seen a significant drop from what we had at the peaks. For instance, Vietnam, I've seen some stuff for 1,500 to 2,000 a can where we were seeing in excess of 20,000. And, and then you look at Italy, which you know, is still in the, the 6,000 range, but there was, you know, out of Italy and Spain, the EU, we, we saw as high as 15,000 on containers when those were typically, you know, 4,000 or 3,000. So we've seen a drop um, significantly on the shipping costs. That's one of the wild cards because those uh, shipping companies can control the container costs just by supply and demand of those lanes. So right now out of Asia, you know, we can't, we're not importing obviously from China, but out of Vietnam, Malaysia, even, and even India, so to a certain extent, we've seen a big import uh, flux come in. We'll, we'll get the supply of product. I believe it will be available. And obviously our domestic factories are full and doing great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about, you know, as you look at the economic side, uh, what about per capita market share for tile? In other words, you know, for a while, we've been concerned about losing market share on the tile side uh, to the luxury vinyl tile, luxury vinyl plank community. Do you analyze that? And, and and is that, you know, is that slowing down or is that still a major concern uh, for the tile industry, uh, you know, losing market share to that that segment? You know, it's the million dollar question, right? Um the one thing on the first part, you know, leave LVT out. The, the one thing that's great about uh, ceramic tile is we're still one of the lowest users per capita in any industrialized nation of ceramic tile. You think and that's, that's not changing. changing? That's not no. changing. Yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, we've got a lot more opportunity to put tile in a lot of places is what they're saying. You know, so what's yeah. what's the problem that, that you see with that? I mean, why you is know, I think well, the, the biggest problem is is the consumer. I think, and and obviously we're big carpet users. We've seen carpet tank, you know, I don't want to say tank, there's still, it's still the leading um, floor covering product. But at the same time, I think the American consumer uh, is identifying the fact that, listen, that that can hold a lot, it's dirty. It can be, it, it can hold a lot of problems for us. And in a hard surface, let's talk about that, Kat, is much more, you know, clean cleanliness um and and uh just much more safer from an environmental standpoint people look to that but specific to ceramic tile you know when you look at the per capita use and around the world 
I mean, you travel the world, Bart, you, you go into a restroom, tiles all the way up the ceiling everywhere, and and we're just not there yet. Um, but people say, will we ever get there? Well, I remember the days of when your tile on a new home was a 20 square foot, eight by eight, and that's all you got. Now you can do the whole downstairs, two, 3,000 square feet and a, and a nice big size tile. So we're continuing to increase LVT now has taken a point of that. Now I, I have to tip my hat to the LVT guys because they continue to get better. You know, everything that gets identified, they they and we can fight the waterproof thing and the scratch proof thing. We as an industry have a great product. We just didn't sing our our the benefits of ceramic tile loud enough as they banded together and did on LVT. But I think the weakest thing on the LVT side is the the looks. And yeah. if you look at the rigid core, 90% of what gets sold is a wood look. What remains to be seen is when they really start using inkjet in the LVT market, how it will impact the tile industry. And now they they say, we make a Calicutta, we make a marble look. But if you look at it, it's a repeat in four tiles. Yeah. And, and obviously with ceramic tiles, not that way, but IMF or I4F has come out with this new inkjet technology that we see some companies investing in the United States. So it, it remains to be seen if they're going to be able to do that. I want to talk a little bit about uh, what you see at your side and 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 the tile trends because uh, I, I have some thoughts about three steps forward, three steps back with when it comes to us gaining market share. But let's talk about 2023. You know, we're are we in a recession? We're headed to a recession. It's all you know. Everybody's talking about all of this, but you mentioned that the prices had gone had gone up because without a doubt, you know, as you know, Joe, I represent labor. And one of the biggest issues the installers have had is they can't rely on a price quote. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, they're given a bid for a job commercially it might be six months out residentially might be, you know, two or three months out, but they're given a bid and, and then it's time to order the material and the price is already up. Uh, are you seeing any stability coming into the pricing? Because I think the cost of tile, is obviously going to affect us uh, and, and consumers are actually having less money to go around because of inflation. So what are your thoughts on the economy as how it affects tile for 2023? I, in terms of the price for specifically the tile, every indicator that I look at would, would mean that it's either going to stay the same or drop in some cases. Um, and and we know that a lot of companies went through and did surcharges, you know, for these contractors. That was just an add-on to the invoice. And the, and the perception is, okay, when things are mellow again and, and even out, that surcharge will either go down or go away. But it doesn't but, always happen. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> always happen. And so that's the that's the wild card out there that I think some companies some companies have had one for a long time and and have fluctuated with market conditions. Some companies said we'll never do that and then with the pandemic said I think it's the best way to do it cuz then we're not raising our product price um and uh, out of reach and then have to go out and do a a product decrease per se. They just have the surcharge. So it remains to be seen because that becomes a line item on any company's spreadsheet when you see that nice little surcharge show up it's like okay do i want to make the decision to make that go away tomorrow and and how much goodwill am i going to get from my customers am i going to get a whole lot more volume if i make that surcharge go away so it's a big decision for these companies after they establish that out there you know and 23 i don't think we're going to see any additional price increases i do think we'll see a change in the mix though bart and what i mean by that is with the new home construction that we saw just, you know, really growing over the last two years, historically, when we see in these down times, and listen, we're going to see it with the interest rates where they've gone, obviously, we'll see a mix change in uh, specifically into some lower price point products. Um, and, the, and the consumers really trying to squeeze to get in to make sure their ratios are right. They may not upgrade like they used to and stay with base grade. So we see that historically in a downturn is that our mix changes, which overall just a lot more of the lower price product will sell. How do you uh, see the commercial market looking for 2023? I know you study the architectural billings index. Um, uh, does that look uh, good from the commercial side for tile? Yeah. And and on the reports that you referenced, that I put out the the ABI had a good indicator. And, and remember that that indicator is 12 to 18 months. And it, rather simply for those that aren't familiar with it, if, if 
investors or, or builders or um, owners of properties are paying to have drawings done, historically, those get executed in 12 to eight month, 18 months because that's a big investment for them to make. Now, one of the things that's the wild card, and, and to answer your question straight up, 2023, I think, will be strong with all that's booked all the way through third quarter, no doubt. Good. You know, with what we've seen, it's the ones that fourth quarter and in the following year with interest rates going up, you might have some of those people who pulled plans, did the plans that might put them on the shelf. And and then it depends upon, OK, are rates going to go down fourth quarter of next year or into the 2024 will rates go down? That's when we'll see them pull those things back off the shelf. And, and reinvest in those those particular projects. So I think we'll be strong in 2023. Coming into 2024, I think it will be softer as we see the indicator is getting softer below 50 mark, which is usually a sign that we're going to not see growth in the commercial market. Okay. You know, we talked about, you touched on per capita market share and that the U.S., we still have, we still have a lot of growth potential in this tile industry in per capita market share. You go to the major trade shows and you go to the show in, at Shursai in Italy and provide a very good report on the new trends and, and, and forecast how you see those particular products impacting the US market. About seven, eight, maybe 10 years ago, you know, we saw the large, the, the laminum process, the, 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 uh, the, the, the uh, sheet, uh, uh, large format uh, tile in the thin format, all the way into uh, now we know, uh, uh, you know, we're now seeing porcelain tile really hit the market uh, uh, in two centimeter and three centimeter materials. Um, I, I When I said three steps forward, three steps back, I feel like we're gaining market share in some places and then we, lo we lose market share in others. For instance, you know, commercially, we may not see in a hotel's you know, the tile in the bathtubs anymore. They they seem to go to other, you know, prefab type uh, type product. But yet there is opportunity in these large format porcelain tile panels, gauge porcelain tile panels, two centimeter, three centimeters. What are you seeing on the trends? Are we are we selling more than uh, 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 gauge porcelain tile panel projects? Or is that a niche that's going to kind of stay? And is there a real opportunity with 2CM, 3CM exterior, the way I think there is uh, compared to pavers? You know, I, there's no doubt it's growing. And we see we we see and hear big percentage increases, but we all have to take a step back and say that percentage increase of 50 to 75% is on what volume? So it's it's still a growing category for us. Um, but to answer your question, there's no doubt that panels are going to become a bigger part of our market. And I think you and um, the rest of the industry has done a great job in terms of trying to train installers for that because it's a different animal for us. It let's is. just face it. And, and you know, there's two categories when I look at that. There's the, as you said, the 2CM and 3CM, um, gosh, porcelain out there, the Lamgia technology, which I think is incredible. But um, when you look at that, it's really, um, you say exteriors, you could see the 2CM as, I, I kind of put that as a separate category of the pavers, but yeah. the the countertop piece of the porcelain market, we see starting to grow, but in really the 12 and the 20 mil, that's where we'll see that growth. But then you have the six millimeter for the actually facades of exterior applications, interior applications, which we're seeing more and more of at Total Solutions. There was a wonderful architect there who I wish we could would clone and put him across the country um, because he does a fantastic job specifying the product. And, and really, when you see what he's able to do with it, it opens up just a plethora of things. And if you look at Europe, we typically follow Europe 10 to 15 years. Yeah. And they're using it everywhere. And so We'll get to that point. I still think it's not more than maybe 5% of our overall market right now. But when you look at the opportunity in that category, it's definitely going to grow. Um, but I think a big area it's going to grow is for additional wall applications. And when we get better, um, which which I think increases the volume of where ceramic goes because of the beautiful um, content that you can get with a large panel versus a lot of other wall furnishings. And I've even seen it used on some, um, you know, lobby floors. When you get a get good install down um, and it's done right, there's no other better thing, you know, that you can have than a porcelain panel on a floor that's installed correctly. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you. What are your clients telling you about available uh, labor and quality of installers? I mean, we all know that the labor shortage is or, or available uh, availability of labor is not just a tile issue. It's a, it's an issue in the whole construction industry. But um, you work with importers, you work with manufacturers. You know, how much of that is part of discussions they have with you? Not that you can solve this, but just wondering what your perception is of if that's changing at all or if that's just a continuing problem or trend in our industry. Well, I can first shout out to you guys and CTEF and Brad and Scott and the work that they're doing um, just to go out and train the industry, because that's obviously the, the shortage that we're seeing um, is from the, the lack of installers. And we do hear that and out in the marketplace and, and that there's not enough quality installers and in the, uh, you know, supply and demand dictates price. And, and that unfortunately rises up the price of ceramic tile and consumers look at that versus another hard surface like LVT, which is a lower install price. We all know that the, the better opportunity is for the ceramic tile. And I always like to say, um, you know, there's the green factor with LVT. It's, it's plastic at the end of the day. And the consumer is more concerned with the green in their wallet than they are with the green of the environment when it comes down to them paying. And so if I can save a couple thousand bucks, I'm going to go with this LVT over tile, even though tile's better. So we see that happening out in the marketplace only because of the lack of the installers. Um, and the ones that we have out there, you know, the, the good ones, there's no doubt that, that those guys are busy. Every single one of them is busy and obviously supply and demand, those guys are going to raise their prices, which is a natural characteristic of an environment, uh, an economic, democratic and economic process, which is great. Um, but at the same time, it will more limit the industry. And those guys obviously are reacting to the, the opportunity and doing the right thing. But I think that's one of the reasons that we continue to see companies try to come up with easier install methods and and to try and lower that install cost which is something um somebody will eventually come up with i think down the road that'll make it much more advantageous to install at a lower cost yeah because you're right i mean it, it, we're we're just not an easy diy product i mean it takes a certain type of person to be able to install tile uh themselves it's not so much the installation of tile as you know uh, but the preparation of the substrate and getting it suitable uh, to put the tile down. So you're right. The more technology changes and we make this less labor uh, intensive. And we've seen that uh, over the years. It's easier uh, to put shower pans in and pre-slopes in and things of that nature. But uh, that that's absolutely a, an area we hope to see continue to change. I want to, as I get towards the end of this, I want to ask you, uh, you mentioned price and the price of tile, and it was is possibly leveling off. One thing that impacts the price of tile is buying power. And, uh, uh, you know, I, it, it feels to me that distribution is evolving. Uh, you know, you've got your big players in our industry, you know, your Dow Tile acquired uh, Vitramax, uh, uh, and they're even a bigger you know, a bigger company now with Marazzi, Dow, American Oli, and Vitramax. Uh, um, uh, in that in that group, you have the growth of floor and decor on the retail side and and the home centers, um, and uh, and I've seen a movement towards you know your larger distributors getting larger, right? Your Emser, your Bedrosians, uh, 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 and these type of companies, and even even some acquisitions taking place in distribution. How do you see distribution? evolving are we going to see more of these small distributors getting bought up or 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 merging uh so that we've got more super regional distribution how do you see this all taking place because that impacts the price of tile certainly and it, that is the i said your other one was the million dollar question this is the 10 million dollar question for our industry and and um while at dal tile i did a lot of study on the channels and and what percentage moved through the tr three traditional channels <clears throat> excuse me, which is the home centers, Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, I throw in there, and I'll explain floor and decor in a second. The company-owned stores, company-owned stores is Dow Tile, Florida Tile, Crossville, manufacturers who have their own distribution within the United States. Or a hybrid um, or a hybrid of, of they sell to independent distribution, but also have their own. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But then you have the independent distributors. 
And historically, we have seen the independent distributors. One of the thing is our industry, as I see it, there's a lot of legacy in, in terms of family business and that. And so the great grandfather started it and, you know, the dad and the next generation is taking on the companies that haven't changed with, you know, the business environment and shifted with things and have done things the same way that grandfather has, um, you know, 50 years ago, we've seen those start to lose some share like yeah. you were talking about. And and what I've done is I've taken a look at the industry and said, there's not all distributors are doing bad because I consider Emzer or an MSI or Bedrosian, like you mentioned, yeah, they're a distributor they're also. So I created right a fourth category. Yeah, And the yeah. fourth category is what I call the mega distributors. That's they true. either have a very strong footprint in their region, or like you said, they're national and expanding. I see a fifth category that's birth. And that is what I call the retail. And I throw just two customers. Floor and decor and the tile shop in there. And yep. the reason I do that and I don't throw them in the big box part is because they go after the pro, the bucket and trowel guy, you know, our, our sweet spot. They go after the pro who influences the consumer versus Home Depot Le, Le, and Menards and Lowe's and Menards who goes after the consumer directly. So they have a different way that they go to the market. Yep. And so I separate them out because they're a little bit different channels. So there's five channels. And what I see happening is the independent distributor is declining and it's either because they're just getting smaller, going out of business or being bought or becoming one of the private equity groups, you know, that we've seen come out and gobble up a few distributors. They, they create a mega distributor. The mega distributor category, as you said, they're getting bigger, they're buying power stronger. And so they're starting to grow um, along with the channel of the retail which by floor and decor, I mean, the numbers are public, you know, they they have been explosive growth and their model is, is one that I think is very flexible and is gonna allow them to continue to grow. And they've taken significant share from the home center channel and also from uh, every other channel because they really sucked up a lot of those bucket and trowel guys that are out there. And with their plan to open as many as 500 stores, it comes to a very convenient thing for the bucket and trowel remodel guy out there. So I continue to see those guys um, grow. Tile Shop has a very small niche in there um, and we'll see how they do. Um, you know, Over the years, they just got relisted out on the stock exchange recently. But I do continue to see the mega distributor and that retail channel growing, You know, but primarily because floor and decor. Does that uh, force the, as you said, the um, uh, independent distributor to really look at the, the to become more specialized, you know, to, to look at uh, the type of product that they bring in and import uh, to be more high end, more customer driven, more customer focused? Or do you see any of that changing? What does an independent distributor do about this changing dynamic? And and all of those things you just said, it's it's trying to do something more specialized or mixing it up. You know, we had a speaker at Total Solutions, I think it was three years ago, who said, if you stay on that same path of doing the same thing, it's that, you know, what's the definition of, of uh, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And so when you look at it from that perspective, it's like, okay, are you changing your strategy? Are you going retail? Are you, you know, what are you doing? And I think we see the independent distributors across the country, some of them doing a piece of all of those things that you just mentioned, becoming, you know, very product specific, going high end, going retail, but they're changing up their model, which is smart because of the fact that they've seen them start to lose share to these other channels and they need to mix it up and do things a little bit differently. That's great. Okay. Final question. I go on all day with you on this. I love this. I love talking to you. I, I think you're a wealth of knowledge in our industry. You know, it, when it comes to the labor side, we've seen uh, um, one of the things that my members are concerned about is quality of tile. You know, does the tile meet 137.1? You know, all of these new, uh, new technology, we might not have standards for them yet. 2CM, we're working on standards for 2CM and 3CM. My question to you is, China, uh, as you as you mentioned, you know the the Chinese market kind of got shut down with uh, 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 tax uh, surcharges and countervailing duty and all of that. Where are we buying tile from? As is 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 you know we know the European product is a, is a high quality product when it comes in. Do you see the quality of tile being 
uh, impacted at all as we try to find sources in Vietnam, India, uh, 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 Brazil, other places, uh, Turkey? It, it, how do you view the quality of tile entering our market right now? And that's a good question. We learned a lot when we started importing from China, because that's obviously everybody's concern. In the very beginning, the quality wasn't so good. And we put in, you know, the PTCA and different things uh, was the program, I believe, to certify the porcelain and different things, because coming out of China, we were getting some product that wasn't meeting standards, like you were saying. So I think we learned a tremendous amount and who learned the most was the importer. Yeah. And so the while your contractors are concerned, the importers are more concerned with making sure they're getting quality product out of these countries of Vietnam, Indonesia, and these and India, countries we we didn't significantly import from previously. But because of the learning lessons of China, their guard is up because they know once they sell your contractor, you know, uh, some bad product, that's a reputation for them. So there's a lot more things in place. And I think the the fact that the standards required by the American contractor and consumer are being very well communicated to these companies that we're not going to run into the problems we did, you know, 25 years ago when we were first starting to import from China and, and they became this behemoth of being over 20% of our market. So I don't see it affecting it. Will we still have quality problems from time to time? Sure, even the U.S. guys do, yes. uh, but we won't see some overwhelming you know, um, drop in the quality of product because we're importing from Vietnam. And that's primarily because the importers know what standards to put in place with these guys. That's great. Final question. What what will my members uh, or what could our members, if they decide to come to coverings, what do you think we'll be seeing from a new introduction standpoint, types of technology uh, uh, that you see, uh, that you saw in Italy in September that might be coming to uh, in April for uh, uh, attendees? Well, the biggest thing is big sizes. You know, they continue to get bigger. Um, and I say, hey, you know, us Americans, we haven't caught up with you over in Europe yet. Um, with with uh, the installation expertise, while the training's there, I just think we haven't gotten across the country um, with the training. You guys have done a wonderful job with the training, but there's no doubt bigger sizes are coming. And the ability to decorate is just mind blowing what we can do with with product. There's no other other floor covering can, that can do um, from a decorative standpoint what ceramic can do. And it's just the the only point that is the cost and that keeps it prohibitive from growing even more because there's no other product that has the quality level of ceramic tile. And I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, uh, but when you look at all the different hard surfaces out there. Um, you're going to see bigger sizes continue to grow. Um, and with that, as you mentioned, the installation companies are coming up with fantastic ways for us to be able to install those products correctly so we get that longevity out of them and the decorative ability uh, uh, ability to be able to do those because inkjet has come a long way yeah. since it was first introduced. Yeah. And are you still seeing uh, the terrazzo looks, concrete looks like what about the the design looks? Uh, are those still hot? And, and will we be seeing those uh, as well? Wood look is wood look dying. Uh, marble look looks like it's, you know, the, the, the fact that you can make porcelain tile now in the large format panels to, and you just frankly, I, I I've been in the business 40 years, almost 40 years like you. And I, I don't know if we can tell the difference between metric stone. <laughs> I, and I can't, and I can't tell the difference. Yet. Yeah. And, and yeah. To, you just nailed it on the looks, you know, the marble look because of the technology it's, it's, we've really impacted the stone side, obviously they've seen that. And, but I think we've increased the ability of uh, being able to use it in more applications because stone with its maintenance issue, maintenance issues in a lot of cases, it, it we wouldn't get used. So right. we've we've expanded it with this ability to be able to decorate so nicely on marble looks. And then also concrete, you know, and we're in our 10th version or of of concrete, you know, that from where we first started to where we are now. And and wood looks, while they're not 30, 35% of our market anymore when they were hot, they're still out there. And I think manufacturers have now right size their business to not be overloaded in wood, so to speak, um, looks out there. So definitely the the continued trends is in the marble and in that concrete look. We've seen some terrazzo, the metallic looks come in a little bit. Um, but the exciting thing, I think the biggest thing is is more and more wall tile. 
And, and that's an opportunity for the ceramic tile industry while we use floor tile going up the walls in a lot of cases, specifically, you know, wall tiles, um, the small unit rectangular has just exploded um, in terms of use. And that's a great opportunity for distributors to make a little bit more margin in their mix. Um, and we've seen that the wall tile just, just explode in terms of usage in the United States, which is great. Wonderful. Well, if I got one message to give to the installers and the tile contracting community that I got from this discussion with Joe, it's if you haven't gotten trained to do large format tile installations, gauge porcelain tile panel installations, and even, you know, understanding the pedestal systems and gravel and sand installations exterior, I think it's time to add that to your uh uh, part your your portfolio moving forward joe no thanks doubt. for being thanks for being our guest today i've really appreciated this oh thank you it was a pleasure to be here bart you've been listening to an interview with joe lundgren from joe lundgren consulting what's your website again joe to sign up for your uh, economic information uh, it's just joseph lundgren consulting.com i highly recommend everyone signing up for that if you don't already joe thanks again and this is bart bettigo with tile letter magazine and the ntca with our one-to-one -one. thanks again joe thank you